I'm going to take a very quick revision of nuclear physics today. This is advanced nuclear physics and this will be applicable for any kind of competitive exam which has nuclear physics. For example, like CSI NET, GATE, um, BRC and whatever exam which has nuclear physics this video will be helpful for them also and this is actually i am revising this and i do it in my way so firstly i remember the value of e square by 4 pi epsilon naught which is 1.44 mev femtometer one femtometer is 10 to the power minus 15 meter now one amu is 931 mev and the meaning of q value is mass difference between the parent and the daughter nucleus which is same as the binding energy difference between the parent and the daughter nucleus now this is the value this is the mass of neutron this is the mass of proton and r is equal to r0 a to the power one third r0 is 1.2 into 10 to the power minus 15 meter now from semi empirical mass formula we can determine the mass of any nucleus which is mass of proton plus total mass of neutron minus the binding energy binding energy uh, has some important terms like volume term surface term coulomb term asymmetry term and this delta mm, the term which is worth remembering is this one this is this coulomb term which is 3 by 5 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q square by r where q is z e and r is r0 a to the power one third okay so a lot of question comes from the cell structure this i have written uh, like this way which is actually very helpful for me to remember i remember this like spp dsd fp fpg so spp dsd fp fpg spp dsd fp fpg and the value this is the j value and this spp these are uh, the l value for for as l is equal to 0 all we know that for p l is equal to 1 and so on and these are the j values for s j value is half for p j value is 3 by 2 and half 3 by 2 and half for d a this j value is 5 by 2 3 by 2 for f this is 7 by 2 5 by 2 and for g this is 9 by 2 and we know that all orbitals co contain 2j plus 1 number of nucleons so this s orbital s half orbital contain 2 nucleon p orbital contain 4 nucleon this or this this p orbital contains 2 nucleon and these these are the numbers uh, each orbital which number the number of nucleon each orbital can contain and up to these two nucleons are filled up to this eight nucleons are filled up to this 20 nucleons are filled so these are the magic number 2 8 20 28 and this and so on so from this one line only a lot of questions can be covered uh so this is another important formula that is which is the most stable nucleus uh, for a particular number of a the formula is z is equal to a by z is equal to a by 2 plus 0 0.015 a to the power 2 third so a lot of question can also be covered by this formula only okay now this is a chart to determine nuclear magnetic moment to determine nuclear magnetic moment so from here we can 
identify the L value and the J value of any nucleus right for any nucleus we can identify what is the value of the last unpaired new value of L value and the J value of the last unpaired electron sorry the nucleon so for even even nucleon the magnetic moment is always even plus but for odd odd nucleon actually i don't know i have to study it a little bit mo more i don't know but what i am going to revise now is what happens for odd even nucleus odd evens mean odd even nucleus means the proton can be odd and the neutron can be even or vice versa so for odd proton this is the chart and for odd neutron this is the magnetic moment and all magnetic moments are in the units of a nuclear magnetron so for example if we have odd proton right and the j value of the term is l plus half then this will be the nuclear magnetic moment and for odd neutron and for same j plus j is equal to l plus half this will be the magnetic moment similarly for j is equal to l minus half we can determine what is the value of a magnetic moment for odd p odd p means odd proton and this is for odd neutron so this chart is very much remembering very much important to remember now we all know that nucleus any nucleus rotates and it gives rise to the rotational bands for exam purpose we have to remember the formula for this rotational band and we have to remember that and firstly firstly have to, i am telling what is the formula the formula is e is equal to h cut square by 2i j into j plus 1 okay and this j value is always even for rotational band and the parity is always plus so for this is for j is equal to 0 this is for j is equal to 2 and this is for j is equal to 4 okay now this one is very uh, one of the important property of mirror nucleus what happens is the mass difference of two mirror nucleus the mass difference of two mirror nuclei is this the mass difference of proton mass difference of neutron and the mass binding energy difference between two nuclei but we know that for mirror nuclei the proton number difference is one and the neutron number difference is minus one so this is the property of mirror nuclei so ap applying these two conditions this equation becomes this one so sometimes some direct question questions are asked from this formula that the mass difference of two mirror nucleus are found to be this uh, what is uh, this 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 and blah 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 so th the formula is this there is a mass difference of two mirror nuclei is the mass difference between one proton and one neutron and this is the coulomb term ac mass number to the power one third and two z minus one from my experience what i found is uh, these term in the in some mathematical problems these terms is also taken as 2z as as the number of z is high very high so 2z minus 1 is taken as 2 2z so now you may ask one question that which z is taken here because we have two mirror nuclei right so which z so the z of the smaller nucleus is uh, considered here so the formula 
is this but at the time of doing problem we will use 2 z 2 z small for the smaller nucleus okay so this part is covered now we are going to the radioactivity part so all we know that nucleus radioactive nuclei decay by this exponential decay law and this is the decay constant lambda t half is the half life and the product of this is 0 0.693 always and activity is d and dt which is lambda in 20. now this is the unit of radi radioactivity the unit of radioactivity is 1 kuri 1 kuri means 3.7 into 10 to the power 10 disintegration per second so what happens when successive uh, transformation happens so for example p is decaying to p is decaying to q with a decay constant lambda 1 and the q is again decaying to r with a decay constant lambda 2 and r is a stable nucleus so pictorially you can understand it first that this is p which is decaying and this is decreasing exponentially and the last stable nucleus is increasing exponentially and then stabilize but the intermediate nucleus which is this q this increases first and then it decreases exponentially at a particular time t is equal to tm the uh, amount of q become maximum and this characteristic time is co is given by 1 by lambda 1 minus lambda 2 ln lambda 1 by lambda 2 and after solving the differential equations like these these differential equations we can uh, find the amount of uh, first nucleus second nucleus and third uh, nucleus as a function of time these are not that much important to remember but it is very important to understand the concept that what is exactly happening so what is branching ratio um, branching ratio for example um, uh, for example the one same nucleus is decaying by alpha and beta decay for example so at that time no i am not discussing the branching ratio i am just discussing the concept about a branching radioactivity so the total half life is 1 by t this is the total half life this is and this will be equal to 1 by t half for alpha plus 1 by t half of beta Uh, the range of alpha is proportional to v cube and this we all know and this one important formula to remember is this one this is geiger natal law where r is range of alpha lambda is the decay constant and the alpha disintegration energy t alpha is the q value for this reaction into 1 minus 4 by a and this is the energy of the gamma after alpha decay and this is uh, given by this formula e gamma is equal to q value of alpha decay minus uh, the energy of the alpha into 1 plus m alpha by capital m y so what is this that i will discuss later that okay i am telling you now uh, this one okay i will i will come in later so there are three types of beta decay one is beta minus decay beta plus decay and from and electron capture so these are the condition for which uh, uh, the there are uh, these decays are feasible this is the parent nucleus this is the daughter nucleus and we this is very important to remember that uh, with beta minus antineutrino comes out and uh, for these two neutrino electron neutrino comes out so this first page is over we have 
just one half page remaining <laughs> this chart is very important this is the selection rule for beta decay in various exam a lot of different types of questions are actually asked but if we remember this only one chart we can solve every problem okay so this is what kind of transition whether it is super allowed allowed first forbidden second forbidden th third forbidden this is a very detailed chart um, but these all of these are not required for exam purpose but i have given this detailed chart for super allowed this is the change of parity this is the change of j value okay so if this condition satisfy then this is the farmy decay and for this this is the gamma teller decay okay so for example for super allowed no parity actually changes and if delta j is zero then both the decay is possible by farmy or by gamma teller similarly we have to understand in each and every question that what a kind of uh, changes is happening uh, for whether the parity is changing if the parity is not changing then uh, the possibility will be these these the or this if if the parity is changing then this and this if the parity is changing then we have to understand that what uh, what is the value of delta j how much value delta j is delta j is i mean the j is changing and from that value we can answer that whether uh, this is a farmy or gamma teller but in some cases we can see that for example here uh, for example if delta j is equal to 1 and parity changes this one so, so we at that time we cannot tell the from this chart that whether it is farmy or gamma teller because this has also one this has also one so at that time we have to um, know this this one that what we have to use so if delta j is not changing for example here 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 that means this is fermi and gamma mix okay if the delta j value is less than equal to delta l then this is fermi and if delta j value is less than or equal to delta l plus one then this is gamma this is all we have to know about selection rule of beta decay now selection rule of gamma decay this is also very important a lot of lot of student doesn't understand what the exact meaning of this um, i think this chart will help them so there are um two type of transition electric or electric or magnetic for example uh, if the change in angular momentum is uh, one then we can say that this l is equal to one okay if l is equal to one then that uh, transition is given by the symbol e1 this, this is the l value okay so this is the e l is the symbol of that transition sometimes we can see that this is e1 transition sometimes we see e2 transition what are the meaning of these so e l means means e1 means change in angular momentum is one and what kind of transition is this this is 2 to the power l pole transition means if l is equal to 1 means this is dipole right because 2 to the power 1 is 2 but if l is equal to 2 then that is e2 tra transition which means 2 to the power 2 means 4 which means this is quadrupole transition so 
so whether it is electric or magnetic that can be determined by this parity change for l is equal to even no if there is no parity is changing and then this is electric transition and actually this condition is reversed in case of reverse means opposite in case of electric and magnetic so this parity change by this parity change we can identify that whether it is electric transition is happening or magnetic transition is happening okay so this chart is also i think very important for some student because when i was uh, trying to understand this uh, i had a lot of difficulties uh, to understand this one um now this is the gamma ray intensity when when gamma ray passes through any material so this is i is equal to i0 into e to the power minus mu x where ax is the thickness of the medium and mu is the absorption coefficient very simple formula okay done and now what happens for the nuclear reaction that is a small mass m x small m x is being bombarded on capital m x and two fragments are produced by um, the masses are given, written here capital m y small m y small v small and something like that so the q value is the kinetic energy difference between the between these and these and this can be also written as like this if the q value is greater than zero then this is exothermic is less than zero this is endothermic this is the threshold energy that is the minimum energy required to for the reaction to happen we have to remember this one okay and this, this is zero for exothermic reaction because of exothermic reactions are spontaneous so no external energy is actually required to for the for the reaction to happen now nuclear fission when for a neutron is bombarded on a target a compound nucleus is formed and then the compound nucleus decays to these two nucleus and three neutrons are this is one particular uh, example of fission fission are of two types one is spontaneous one is induced uh, for spontaneous uh, no bombarding particle is required and for induced bombarding particle is uh, required so we can bombard two types of uh, particle for example thermal neutrons or fast neutron thermal neutrons is uh, thermal neutrons are low energy neutrons and fast neutrons are uh, very high energy neutrons okay so one another thing we always see in the books is this uh, fission curve what is this mm, for example one neutron is being bombarded in one nu nucleus one compound nucleus is formed and then that decays to x and y and some neutrons are coming out and this is the q value so these x and y are not unique it may be x1 y1 it may be x2 y2 something like that so this is the in this curve this is the yield what is yield yield is the number of nuclei of mass number a formed that is e uh, yield of yield for a particular mass number nucleus then the number of nucleus the number of nuclei of mass number a formed by the total number of fission so this is the yield and this can be converted into percentage also so if we plot the yield versus the versus the mass number we can see that for 130 for 135 uranium the yield has this kind of two peaks one peak is at a is equal to 95 and uh, at a is equal to 135 which means that asymmetric fission is actually occurring more and rather than the symmetric one okay so this i have actually explained here that 
uh, wh wh what will happen for various kind of other conditions that the carb seeps upward as the neutron energy increases neutron means when the the bombarding particle okay the probability of symmetric fission is very small compared to the asymmetric that we have already seen and the probability of symmetric fission increases with increase in energy okay so this is one condition for symmetric uh, fission that is z square by a and should be greater than 44 and this is one formula you can uh, Mm, remember it or not i don't think this is uh, very much important and the last topic is the nuclear reaction cross section so i will explain what uh, firstly this formula we have to remember okay so what this n is firstly what is this n0 n0 is number of particle incident per second okay so here for example we have a foil and uh, uh, particle are being incident here so these n0 is the number of particle incident per second and this n is number of particle in the beam which are not reacting per second okay what is what is this uh, mm, not reacting per second okay and these uh, this is the formula we have to remember this what is this x x is the thickness um, um, I think uh, everything is done the, hey, yes yes this one this I was uh, trying to understand the what is small n small n is the number density of the, of the nucleus in the foil that means this is the foil and here this is the density of the nucleus is small n okay x is the thickness for example this this is the material so x is the thickness okay a sigma is a constant and this this actually this is the formula to remember thank you everyone who have seen and if you have any comment feel free to uh, give me any comment any suggestion or any question thank you very much